Hey everyone, this is going to be a short introductory video about my FPV quadcopter. I'll be going into a few details about the build as well as some specifications about the quadcopter itself. Okay, to start off with the quadcopter here. The frame for this quadcopter is the Honey Badger FPV frame made by a user named FPV Monkey on the FPV Lab forms. The frame is made out of Delrin and it's a similar style to the HT FPV frames as well as some other hover things frames that are out in the market. It's uh, essentially a series of plates that are assembled together using aluminum standoffs and aluminum bolts. So the frame went together fairly easily. Uh, this particular frame cost me $120 and uh, for $120 you get the entire frame you get a few spare parts for an extra arm as well as extra hardware like bolts and standoffs and you also get this neat little FPV pod up here at the front and this FPV pod is made out of acrylic not Delrin like the rest of the frame and the interesting thing about this is that it is designed to support a camera a standard 50 millimeter I believe uh, camera like uh, the one I have here as well as a video transmitter and all of it is designed to sit on top of a floating platform so any vibration that comes through your quad goes straight through those foam earplugs down at the bottom and gets uh, dampened out by those earplugs before it reaches the camera and transmitter. So that's a pretty neat design he has there. Um, also because it is all in one pod like that you only have to remove two screws to remove the entire FPV portion and you can start flying it like a normal quad again. So uh, that being said, um, for this frame I chose Sunny Sky 980 KV motors. Uh, that's what these guys are right here. These are uh, very similar quality to Tiger motors, but they cost a fraction of the price. These ones cost me roughly $19 a piece plus a few dollars for shipping, so it wasn't too expensive and they are very smooth. Had no issues with them so far. Um, they have good quality finish and I would definitely recommend them over NTM motors because I've had bad experience uh, with the NTM motors from Hobby King. These are much better than those motors and they only cost, I think, $2 more in total price when you buy a set of four of them. Alright, so with those motors, I matched them with uh, 9 by 4.7 in inch props and uh, the props are the Genfin slow, fi uh, slow Fly style and they are the carbon ABS mix. So they're fairly stiff, they're not stiff as pure carbon, but they are stiff enough that when it's flying you get a really nice quiet sound. You can barely hear it when it's uh, about 20-30 meters away, you can't even hear it anymore. So very quiet, uh, very powerful, very good match with the 980 kV that these motors have. In the uh, middle of my quadcopter here along each arm, I've got Hobby King's F20 amp ESCs and I did flash them with Simon K's latest firmware, so they do perform very well. Uh, I have used mesh wrap right here on between the motor and ESC connections, um, just an aesthetic thing, not necessary, but I thought I might as well add it in there while I had the opportunity. And uh, uh, with the ESC, I've put together a power distribution um, inside the quadcopter by just wiring everything together and applying heat shrink instead of using a power distribution board. My controller board is the CC3D, but it is not the uh, kind that you can buy, it's a DIY CC3D, and I purchased it off a user on RC Groups who sells them uh, for $55, which is about half the price of where you can find it anywhere nowadays. So $55, you get a fully functioning CC3D, it's not made in a factory or anything, but it is definitely the same quality, same performance, everything is exactly the same, except it's a different color uh, board, I think it's purple as opposed to the black or white that you can buy for a hundred dollars now. Okay, so uh, that covers the motors, my ESCs, my controller board. Uh, at the front here, let me just go over what I have. It's a 200 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz transmitter I've got right here. Purchased this one from Hobby King. It's uh, one of the most generic 5.8 gigahertz transmitters you can buy. At the front right here, I've got the Security Camera 2000 PZ0420 board camera, which is the 600 TV line Sony Superhead camera. Uh, works really well once you get the settings tuned in for your specific uh, location. I've been using it now for about a year and a half or so. It hasn't failed me yet. Really good camera, really good price. I think it's $45 now. And I've got the two connected with a short cable that I just soldered together myself. Down at the bottom, there's this little lump of heat shrink right there. That is the 
uh, LC filter that I'm using for connecting my 12 volts from my battery line into the camera. The LC filter is supposed to function as a filter to stop any electrical noise from reaching the transmitter and camera because when the noise hits the camera and transmitter it shows up on your video signal which can interrupt your flight and cause issues. So LC filter is uh, hidden right away in that FPV pod. Uh, on the 5.8 GHz transmitter I have my own custom uh, circular polarized antenna. Um, it is the Cloverleaf design by IB Crazy and I uh, made this one myself, only cost a few dollars. I have tested it out to approximately 1,000 feet so far. I uh, haven't had the opportunity to test it further than that because all of the local po parks nearby don't go that far. So um, definitely minimum 1,000 feet in range and I'm really happy with that, much better than the stock antennas. I'm powering this setup off of a 2200 3 cell lithium polymer battery. It's uh, one of the generic Turnagee LiPos you can buy. I think it only has a uh, C rating of 25 to 30 C. However, with these motors and these props, um, it doesn't pull that much current at all. So, although the batteries do come down warm, they're not coming down hot. And that's a good sign, I guess. So, uh, with these batteries, the entire frame, all up weight, uh, with FPV gear, battery, and everything else included, comes to about 975 grams. So it's just under one kilogram, and uh, with that 2200 battery, and with those motors and these props, I get approximately a 10 minute and 30 second flight time while powering FPV gear. If I remove my FPV gear and unplug it from the rest of the quad, I can get around a 12 minute and 30 second flight time uh, using the same battery and same power system. Lastly, at the back right here, I have uh, my FR Sky receiver. It's uh, one of the eight channel receivers that you can buy. It's the V8 FR2, I believe, and um, it's got diversity antennas on it, which I've zip tied to the back arms here, so they can get uh, equal reception if uh, my orientation gets changed or anything like that. I've had no problems with them. I haven't had to push it to anything longer, uh, further away than 1,000 feet, so uh, I haven't been able to test if their range is what they claim it to be, but for my purposes, it's been an excellent receiver, and it's never failed me so far. Okay, so that is just a really quick introduction of this quadcopter. I will have a full uh, build video as well as more details about each of these components coming up, and uh, that'll be coming up soon. It's uh, still rendering and uh, getting put together right now. All right, well, uh, thanks for watching.